Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Welcome back to my channel, Inside the Hem. I have been playing around with my Cricut Maker again. I was really wanting to figure out how to make my own koozies. And I went online and was really disappointed with the selection of koozie tutorials out there. So I set off to come up with my own. Um, I think that I came up with something that's very reminiscent of what you would find in a store, say a Kate Spade or a Sea Wonder or any of those um, types of stores that combine, you know, the practicality of a koozie and also like really cute too. You know, I don't want it to just be plain and boring. So what I came up with is something a little bit like this. Look familiar? <laughs> um, now I can match my koozie to my dress, which is really special. You all know a lot of times it was just like something that wrapped around the can and then Velcroed, horrible, buttoned. I was like not feeling the button. Um, I wanted something that was like self-contained, just like you'd find in the store. You know what I mean? So, um... I came up with a little design that included the bottom, and then I also figured out how to include um, the By Annie Soft and Stable. I am going to have a video for you guys in a couple of days uh, where I made a bag using that, and I'm telling you that stuff is amazing. Like, I truly love it. And so I was able to incorporate it into here as well to make like a foam koozie but it also has insole bright in it which means it'll keep it colder um and you know it is not flimsy wimpy anything and it's really cute so this is just the basic design this is what i'm going to walk you through how to sew in the tutorial but i also include um in design space where you go get the pattern for the actual koozie. I've also designed some iron-ons that you can also cut um, where you can make something like this that has like glitter stripes and a quote. Um, I have polka dots. I walk you through how to embellish your koozie to make it more personal, make it cuter, make it look more expensive in a way. Um, so you can do something like this too, or just plain drain it and just match your dress. But either way, let's get to the tutorial so you can see just how easy it is to whip one of these guys up. Okay, first up, you're gonna need to load up your mat. I've got fabric there, I've got some iron-on for the background as well as the quote, and then I've got some insole bright and the foam ready to go. So once you have all of your materials cut out, you are going to head to Design Space. This is what you're going to see when you get to the Koozie Project Canvas that I've created. Um, you can tell I've got four um, versions of, of the actual koozie here. These are your fabric main, this is your fabric lining, this is the insole bright, and then this is your foam or your soft and stable, you know, whatever it is that you're using. So you're going to need those four things no matter which version of the koozie you make. Even if you just make a plain fabric one with no embellishments, um, you're going to need these four here. Now this is where things start to get a little bit fun and obviously feel free to make your own. You don't have to just use these. Um, but I've got our, um, stripes here. Um, and you can see that whenever you lay them on top of the fabric, they match up with the, you know, main body. This is the bottom of your koozie or where your the bottom of your soda can will go. Um, and so I thought instead of making individual stripes and having to lay them all out and have them be so exact, I would just make the um, maker cut out the vinyl exactly how I wanted the stripes laid out, like so. Same thing with our polka dot. You can tell that sits in there perfectly. 
Um, so if you want to do like a background with iron on vinyl, you can choose from stripes or dots or make your own. Um, it's really easy to do uh, real quickly. I'll go to images and I almost, almost did this one with an anchor. Um, let's do anchors. Let's filter to single layer. Um, and you can put in an anchor like this. Um, my polka dots are half an inch. So you make it itty bitty. Here we can zoom in a little bit. Um, and then you can either use the polka dots as a guide and just lay the um, anchors over the dots like so. That's probably how I would do it just because all the math is already done. Um, and of course you're gonna want, want to make sure these are all in a straight line, but I would make a straight line and then I would select all of the anchors. I would move, well, select all the anchors. I would weld them together. That makes them all one unit and not four individual anchors. Um, and then I would duplicate, and then you've got four more and you start to offset them like so. Let's just move this out of the way. Um, and then from here, if you want, you can just keep welding and duplicating, welding and duplicating. Um, but again, you're going to want to do a little bit better of a job to make sure they're all in line. I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. Um, so you see now we have a cute little section of anchors and then you weld and duplicate again and you line up the bottom portion with the bottom portion here, so on and so forth. And now you have a cute little section of anchors. You can do it, I think it'd be really cute with hearts. Um, I think it'd be really cute with sailboats. Um, you could really just kind of go crazy here with um, whatever background you want to use. So choose from those. I'll leave the anchors in here for you guys um, since it's already here. Um, and then on top of the background layer, oh, I need another row. I'll get to that. Um, on top of the background layer, you can add a quote. Um, I came up with three that kind of relate to water here because that's what I drink out of my koozie. I don't actually, well, I don't drink alcohol ever. Um, and I don't drink soda ever. I know it seems pretty lame, but, um, I really love sparkling water. And so I buy, um, sparkling, it's, I always have it. So that's why I did little water quotes here. You can do stuff about sewing or, you know, anything you want, but I have three quotes here that you guys can choose from if you want to just use what I've done. And so when you like, let's say we were doing the stripes, um, obviously this would be up here like so, and then it'll get layered like this whenever you actually, um, you know, after you got everything cut out and you're going to use the easy press, I'll show you all of these steps, but that's kind of how it will look. One side will have a quote and one side won't. If you want both sides to have a quote, obviously be sure to include two quotes whenever you cut, um, when you start with the cutting. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do now. I just wanted to kind of give you a lay of the land, what you're looking at. I have it all here, all in one place, all on one canvas for you. And this is how you're gonna pick and choose your design for your project. So like I said, you need all of the actual koozie shapes. So all four of these are gonna stay. Um, we are going to assume that we want to do polka dots. So we have polka dots here. Um, that means we do not want anchors. So you click the little eyeball and the anchors go away. And then you click the little eyeball for the stripes and the stripes go away. So now all we have for background is our polka dots. Um, and then we want to do, let's just do the hydrate quote. Um, or actually let's do this um, anything's possible quote. So now we wanna keep that one open, but we wanna close this guy and we wanna close hydrate. 
Okay, so now that we've got exactly the design that we want with all the different um, designs for each material, we are going to click Make It, and it's going to sort all of this by material, um, simply because I have assigned a color to each um, type of material. So the first one is going to be your main fabric. Um, I'm using like a twill or you know, sort of close to canvas um, for this one. So we um, would click continue from here. It's going to find my machine and it's gonna prompt me to select a material. We can browse all materials and go to fabric and then choose like canvas or um, it's, I think it might even be a twill so we could choose denim. You know, you just want to choose whatever fabric makes the most sense for whatever you're using. Um, and then you would click continue and it would prompt you to, you know, load the mat into the machine and start the cutting process for this specific mat. When that one's done, then you're going to come over to this one. For this one, you're going to select Insole Bright, which is here, um, already in the um, options for you. Then you're gonna prompt, be prompted to load that mat and cut that one. Then for this one, we are gonna select iron-on because that is an iron-on material. Same thing for the quote, but we do wanna make sure that the quote is mirrored so that whenever you lay it on top of your fabric, it you know reads the right way. Um, and then this final one, we are going to um, assign that what they call flex foam. So that's already in the system as well as like a, a preset. So first things first, we're going to start with the fabric and go through the list and I will show you a time lapse of our cutting. It's kind of my favorite part. <laughs> So we've got all of our materials cut out. Um, that's our polka dot. Um, this is our little quote. <clears throat> I don't know if y'all can see the words on there. Probably not. Um, there's that. Then we've got the um, soft and stable. Look at this. Cool. Just comes right off. And now we have, this is our pattern piece <clears throat> for the koozie itself. This is the insole bright. And then finally we have our fabric. One for the main and one for the lining. Okay, so now that we have all of our materials cut. Um, if you're doing a design like I'm planning on doing with these polka dots, then we need to go ahead and weed our iron on. 
So you get your little handy dandy weeding tool. It looks like this, kind of like um, what they use at the dentist, <laughs> if I'm being perfectly honest. And you come in on the, like there's a plastic coating on this side, so you don't weed out that. You weed out the actual vinyl itself. And you just come in, get a little part started like that, and then just peel the negative space away and you'll be left with all of your polka dots. Also a very satisfying um, process. Some things are harder to weed than others, obviously. Like our quote here has a lot of little um, cuts on it so you want to really take your time with that and you know you have to get inside like the O and you have to get in the middle of all the A's so you really want to take um, a lot of time whenever you're weeding out the quote <clears throat> okay so now we need to adhere the um, polka dots to our to one side of our fabric um, and so you simply lay out your fabric Lay out your dots. First of all, how cute is this gold and pink together? Oh my gosh, so cute. Um, and then you need to follow the instructions for the iron-on to press or to heat this and bond it to your fabric. I am gonna be using my Easy Press. For the Easy Press, there is this handy dandy reference chart. So I am using 100% cotton, but it's more like a canvas. So I'm gonna go over here to the canvas section and this is metallic iron-on. So I'm gonna set it to 270 degrees and I'm gonna press you know, the entire surface um, for 40 seconds, flip it over and then do it for half that time for uh, 20 seconds. Okay, now the metallic iron-on needs to cool completely before you can peel the backing away. So I'm gonna leave that to set on the Easy Press pad and just completely cool. If you wanna see, here's what the stripes look like. And this one I used the glitter iron-on. Isn't that so pretty? So that's what the stripes look like. I did end up, after I made this prototype, I did end up widening the stripes so they will go all the way um, to the edge, but that's kind of what the stripe looks like. Um, and then I cut out um, a version that it's not gonna have any um, iron-on on it. I'm gonna make this one lace up the sides with a little pink ribbon. It's gonna be really cute. And then this is the one that we are going to make. This is gonna be completely plain. Um, this is your kind of like base, basic um, koozie with no embellishments. Okay, here we have all of our pieces to make just the basic koozie with no embellishments. I am going to attach the lining to the foam and I'm gonna do that by doing kind of like a little bit of a quilting method. Um, I, I need the foam to kind of be smooshed down a, a little bit. That's a technical term. Um, so I'm gonna do um, half inch stripes. I call them stripes, but really it's just um, a basting stitch set apart half an inch from each other. Um, we need the foam to stay in place and not have the fabric shift around. So I really like to use Wonder Clips for this. Um, pins can be a little bit hard to get through all of the foam. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna do half inch um, basting stitch vertically down the lining of the fabric with the foam. And then for the insole bright, I am going to uh, just attach it with an edge stitch. I'm gonna go around 1 8 of an inch around all of the edges, including the circle. Okay, so now we have our foam attached to our lining. 
you can see kind of all the quilting lines there um, and this is all one really super sturdy piece now and this is our insole bright um, attached to the main um, side of our fabric at a 1 8 inch so here are our two pieces you have a couple of options here depending on how comfortable you are with your serger you can either serge around all of the edges which is what i am going to do it's a little bit wonky and a little bit difficult to do um more helpful if you turn the knife off so that it's not actually cutting any fabric you're not trimming anything away anyways because you're just serging the you know very edge of it so if you're nervous try it without the knife on um but if you're super nervous and you don't want to try that at all, that's fine. You can do a zigzag stitch on your machine. Um, same way, coming in here, pivoting and turning. Or you can serge around these three edges, which is pretty easy to do since they're straight and kind of away from everything. And then zigzag this part. Just do it with what you're comfortable. But what we're trying to do is finish off all of these raw edges because nothing is going to be sewn right sides together. The edges are not um, encased in a seam or anything like that. This is like a raw deal. So we want to try and get these um, as clean and finished looking as possible. Okay, the serging is done. You can tell I serged around all the edges. Um, it can be done. You just really, really have to take your time. What I ended up doing was serging with the knife on on these three edges on all four squares and then i would turn the knife off and did from like i put it in the machine like this and then serge from here down and then put the needles down right here and serge from here down and then flipped it over and did from here to the circle and then from the circle out and then kind of wedged it in there and started the serging um, right where the circle starts and just worked my way around um, each of the circles. So it can be done. You have to be a little bit patient and a little bit um, confident, <laughs> but um, it can be done. Either way, okay, so now we have our lining and our main fabric and we need to attach them together. So we're going to place them wrong sides together like so, and then we are going to stitch around all of the edges on our regular machine. Okay, here we are. We have our koozie all attached to the lining the main attached to the lining now we are going to turn up both of the squares like so we're making a flat part for the base of the soda can or the water bottle and then now we need to attach these sides in order to make you know a round koozie so in order to do that you do one side like so you're kind of layering the um surged edges over each other like so and then pinning them together what we're going to end up doing is zigzagging all down this edge to attach these two pieces together so i just put two pins in there obviously make sure they're lined up nice and neat um and Zig, put this through the machine flat like this and keep the little doodad out of the way and then now you can zigzag all the way down this straight line okay so here is what we've got we've got this side all zigzagged completely secure and then this side is completely open so i like to finish the top edge of the koozie here just to give it um, a little bit more of a polished look. I mean, I think that the surging on the side and even on the bottom is kind of okay and not that noticeable, but I think along the top, it really is noticeable. So I like to just use your basic bias tape. You can use purchased bias tape. This is double fold extra wide. I think that that looks best along the edge. Let me show you like so 
you can get an idea of what that would look like. Really sharp, really nice. Or, you know, you can make your own if you'd like to as well. I would need to, you know, press this one and run it through my bias um, maker machine, but you can get an idea of what that would look like. You could use the self fabric um, to make your bias tape. You can use contrasting fabric, um, really kind of just whatever you feel like doing. I think I'm gonna do this contrast one just to give it a little bit of dimension. I thought initially I was gonna use the yellow, but it kind of just blends in too much. So I like the contrast of this black. So you just apply the bias tape like you would anything else. You put the, is it the shorter end on? Yeah, you put the shorter end of the bias tape raw edges together sew this all the way around the edge it should be nice and easy to do since this pretty much lays out completely flat and then you fold it along both of the folds and then stitch in the ditch all the way around okay so there we go our um bias binding has um finished off the top edge i think it looks really great and very fancy if i do say so myself so i have turned this wrong side out so that I can place the um, raw edges right sides together. Then you are going to stitch all along this edge. I would do it a couple of times um, and then turn it right sides out. And when you do that, you will have you know, your little koozie. And there you have it. This is our little insulated koozie that we made. I can tell you guys that this is firm. This is not floppy at all. This is tight, <laughs> obviously. Let me push from the bottom. Um, it is a pretty much a foam koozie um, wrapped in fabric. Um, it, you know, holds itself up. Coincidentally, it's also a really great pencil holder if you need one of those on hand and you're you don't have a drink um, you are going to have a kind of exposed seam inside if that bothers you by all means you know hand stitch that down it's really hard to get this tube into a machine um, you could also do the same thing that we did on this side and overlap the edges and then hand stitch them that way but this is certainly, you know, quick and dirty and kind of like the easiest way to do it. Another option, which I am going to do with my um, red and pink fabric is, so you have this side that is um, zigzagged down. And then instead of overlapping at all, you just um, create some very small buttonholes um, and then feed fab or feed ribbon through the buttonholes to create like a little lace up deal like this. I think this would be adorable if you did like ballet slipper decal or like I love dance. Um, you could even do like brown fabric maybe with footballs on it and then do twill tape um, and it kind of, and tie it off in a knot, not a bow, and it would look a little bit like a football seam. I think that would be really cute. Um, some other options would be to add like a ruffle all along this edge or maybe even a ruffle in this seam. That would be adorable. The, this base pattern really is so great because you can embellish it in so many ways, either with trimmings. Ooh, how cute would like fringe trim or pom-pom trim be right here? Um, or you can embellish it with your Cricut. So here's what it would look like if you did our little quote with the glitter. Anything's possible with a little lipstick and sparkling water um, with the glitter um, with the glitter iron on. Um, or you saw a sneak peek at our polka dots. Here's kind of what the polka dots would look like. Very Kate Spade, if I do say so myself. So really the options are endless once you get kind of the base idea, the basic idea of how to make this koozie. Um, the world is your oyster. And there you have it. It's really not as hard as it seems. Um, it took a little bit of like brain power to sort out some of those details. But in the end, I think that it's a really great product. I think that I could sell these and people would never know 
the difference that I'm doing it at home on a home machine with a pattern that I made up by myself. Um, and as I was kind of going over there at the very end, there are a ton of additional ways that you can embellish your koozie. Um, so I suggested a few, but I want to hear some ideas from you guys too. Um, so let me know what kind of ideas you have to spruce up your koozie, either using uh, iron-on from um, Cricut, um, not using the Cricut machine at all, using some kind of extra fabric, maybe felt. I don't know. Let me know what you guys' ideas are, what you picture, um, and I want to try and make a whole bunch of these because they're just so cute and so darn easy to make. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial and that you'll get out there and start making some koozies. But everything you need is going to be in the description box below. And until next time, that's going to do it. See y'all next time. Bye.